everyone, it's Lana from Lana Under Pressure. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that little sous vide button you might have on your Instant Pot and how to get some of the best steaks you've ever had. Now first let me start off by saying that not all Instant Pots have the sous vide button. So if you run over to your Instant Pot and you can't find it, you're not crazy. Not all of them come with it. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put up a list of all of the uh, Instant Pots uh, mo ones that have the sous vide button. And then at the end of the video, if your Instant Pot doesn't have a sous vide button, I'll tell you how you can fix that. So, if you've never heard the term sous vide, don't worry, it's quite all right. Sous vide is French, it actually means under vacuum. So it may sound like this high fancy cooking term that you look at and you're like, I ain't even gonna touch that button. But really, it, it isn't. It's just cooking something low and slow, kind of like a crock pot. And I'm gonna show you in this video that it's super easy, it's not difficult at all, you don't have to be scared of it, and not only that, but you're gonna probably wanna cook just about everything using that sous vide button. So you may think of sous vide as this fancy French cooking term, but really it's not. I mean, the word buffet is French, and if you've ever been to Golden Corral, there's nothing fancy about that, right? Sous vide just is French for under vacuum, and that's the way it relates to the way that you're gonna cook things, but it's super easy. I like to think of it as in between a slow cooker and an instant pot, and if you can cook in a slow cooker, and you can cook in an instant pot, well, sous vide is easy as pie. Now, one of my favorite things to cook in a sous vide, and that's what I'm gonna show you today, is steak. Now, I'm sure if you've been on those Instant Pot, you know, Facebook pages or those groups and they say, you know, the one thing you can't cook in an Instant Pot is a steak, they are wrong. That's because they've never had it sous vide. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, because it's under vacuum, most of the time, like in a restaurant, they use a vacuum sealer to uh, seal in the food. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because I have a vacuum sealer. However, don't run away if you don't have a vacuum sealer because you don't need one. I have a way that you can just use a gallon Ziploc bag and you get the same exact uh, effect as having it in a vacuum. It cooks it just the same and you don't need to have a fancy vacuum sealer. So like I said, sous vide is French for under vacuum. And so uh, to explain what sous vide really is, is all it means is you're taking your food, you're putting it in a bag and taking out all of the air. And so then that bag is kind of protecting whatever food you put in it. So we're going to use steaks today. So it's really making a protective uh, kind of barrier around that steak. And then we're gonna put it into water that's gonna to come to the exact temperature of what you want that steak to be. So for me, I like cooking my steaks to about 137. So the water is gonna be held, we're gonna sous vide and have the water at 137. And so when we put our steaks in that bag into that water, it's gonna bring that steak or whatever food you put in there to exactly the temperature that you want. it. It's not gonna overcook it, it's not gonna undercook it. And for steaks, if you've ever cooked a steak, it can be really, really hard not to overcook it. I'm terrible at cooking them like in the oven or on the stove or even on the grill. But because the Instant Pot is gonna hold that water to the exact temperature we want it, it's impossible to over or undercook it. So we're gonna start with warm water. And because the Instant Pot is gonna bring up that temperature, I like to use hot water as close to, you know, the temperature as I can. So I just, you know, use my regular tap water, but I make it really hot. And that saves time for the Instant Pot not, have, not to have to heat up cold water. That really saves time. Um, I, you need to use a lot of water. So I fill up the Instant Pot liner, I fill it up to about the 10 cup line or two thirds of the way, and that's for a six quart. If you're using your eight quart, you're gonna fill it up a little more, but you definitely wanna have enough water so when you submerge your food, it's completely submerged in that hot water. So before we even touch our steaks or deal with our food, we wanna go ahead and bring this water up to temperature. So I do that, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the top on. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's on vent or sealed because we're not pressure cooking, so that part doesn't matter. Once we put the lid on, we're gonna go ahead and press our sous vide button, and this is my Instant Pot Max, so it has a touch screen, but each one is a little different. And it's going to have for you to press the temperature and change the temperature and adjust the time. So, for steaks, I like my medium, and that's 140. So I'm gonna set the temperature to 140, and then the time is for steaks one to three hours. Now, here's where a lot of people get really confused because you'll notice on sous vide recipes, they'll give you a range of time. Now, that's not like when your grandmother, you're cooking with her and she gives you a range, like, you know, how many, how many cups of flour do you put in there? Oh, one to two cups. It's not like that. 
The reason that a sous vide recipe gives you a time range is because it's telling you the minimum amount to the maximum amount of time that you can have that food inside that water and it will hold it at that temperature. I usually set it to an hour and a half because usually that's about how long it takes me to get everything ready. But that's one of the great things about sous vide cooking and why I say it's kind of like between a crock pot and a pressure cooker because just like with a crock pot or a slow cooker, it gives you that chance to cook things for a long time and have it perfect when you want it. So here I have two really nice um, New York strip about one and a half inch thick steaks. And so I'm going to show you with one of them how I use the true sous vide method of vacuum sealing it. But on the other one I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have a vacuum sealer. So to prepare your steaks, I just like my steaks with some salt and pepper. However, you can marinate it, uh, you know, a day, 24 hours ahead of time if you want to marinate it. You can put a rub on it. The only thing is when you're sous vide what's important is that the bag that you're putting it in and then once you take all the air out has good contact with the meat. So you don't want anything like a lemon wedge or something like that uh, in the way of that. So the first steak I'm going to go ahead and do in the vacuum sealer. Now whether you do it in the vacuum sealer or a Ziploc bag, you want to make sure you go ahead and season it. And again, I like using just salt and pepper. So I like to put salt and pepper on both sides. And I'm just putting about, I don't know, about a teaspoon on each side. And now, at the end of the whole thing, we're going to go ahead, I'm going to show you how to sear it. And then you, that's another time where you can add some more flavor. So you'll be able to add, you know, whatever other spices you want if you don't do it before. So you're going to go ahead and put your meat into your Ziploc bag. And again, you want to make sure that there's no folds in there because you want to have all the surface of the meat able to be uh, submerged in that water. So you don't want any folds or anything touching. Then you're going to go ahead and vacuum seal. Um, what you do, regardless of which one, which vacuum sealer you have, you want to make sure you do the vacuum seal on the highest setting you can with the highest heat sealing that you can because because it's in water, you don't want any of that water getting in. So you want to make sure you have a really good seal all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to press vacuum seal. Okay, so now it's done vacuum sealing and creating that seal. And you just want to go ahead and make sure and check that you have a really good seal on both sides. Perfect. And now you're ready to go ahead and put it in your Instant Pot and sous vide once your Instant Pot is ready. Now, I told you that if you didn't have a vacuum sealer to do the sous vide, it was no problem. So what you're going to do is you need a gallon freezer Ziploc bag, the kind with a really good seal. And you're going to go ahead and place your steak once you've seasoned it inside the bag and make sure you have no folds or anything because you want to have the bag touching all sides of the steak and then what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to close it really tightly except you're going to leave a little space at one end and what I like to do is I like to use my finger to hold that open and just close it all the way up to there and so we're not going to use, since we're not using the vacuum to suck the air out, we're going to use water displacement. And so I have another Instant Pot liner, because I have like three Instant Pots. So I'm using another liner filled, two-thirds of the way filled with water. If you only have one Instant Pot, what you can do is before you go ahead and put the water into your Instant Pot and turn on the sous, sous vide button, you can go ahead and do this step with it and then go ahead and place it in there. Now I'm using the liner for the Instant Pot, but you can use any large container of water to do this. And you're going to go ahead and submerge your steak. And then you're going to go ahead and zip, ziplock or seal or whatever, <laughs> the top all the way almost to the end. And now you want to make sure that it's really sealed so that you get no water in. And so what I like to do is I like to use my finger because you're going to place that and you're going to leave a little bit of an opening, as small as you possibly can, and ziplock the rest of it. So now that that's ziplocked, the part that's sealed, you're going to start to slowly submerge that under the water, and then that's going to displace all the air out that top through that hole that you have. And so now you want to make sure that as you're putting this Ziploc bag into the water, you don't allow any water to go into the hole. So you're just going to slowly submerge the rest of it and slowly close it until it's completely closed and sealed. Now you're going to, again, make sure it's sealed because that's really important. 
And there you'll see that as much of the air as possible, almost like the vacuum sealer, has now gone out and you have a great vacuum sealed bag. So now that our Instant Pot has reached the temperature, uh, it goes ahead and lets us know and then it starts to count down. So we're going to go ahead and open the lid and we're going to place our steaks in and I'm going to place both of them in. Now in a six quart you can do up to two steaks. The only thing is you have to make sure that when you place them inside the water you want the water to be able to circulate around the steak. So you don't want to place them in close together or touching or you don't want them touching the sides. And you want to make sure they're fully submerged. And then go ahead and place the top back on and let it cook. So now uh, an hour and a half or whatever time you set it for. Once it's done you're going to go ahead and open it up and take the bags out. Now you're going to see that these steaks and this kind of freaked me out the first time I had done it they're gray looking and you're going to look at them and go I don't want to eat that. That looks nothing like what I get at the restaurant. Well, these are cooked completely through and they should be at exactly the temperature that you put them. So now what you need to do is you, we need to go ahead and we're going to sear them and that's how we're going to get that crust and that color. So unlike traditionally cooking steaks where you sear it first and then cook it, in this manner we're going to go ahead and sear it after. Now what's great about that is because these steaks are at the exact same temperature that you want them done, you don't have to let them rest at all. You can go ahead, take them out, sear them, get the crust you want on it, and then go ahead and serve them right away. So I've go ahead and patted them dry and I've added a little bit more seasoning. Just I like to use again salt and pepper, but you can add whatever you'd like on it. And so one of the great things about the Instant Pot is that it also has the saute function. So you can go ahead and sear your steak straight in the Instant Pot or you can do it in a cast iron however you want to do it. Now if you're going to do it in the Instant Pot you got to make sure that you adjust your setting on saute to the highest possible. Then you're going to add about two tablespoons of oil and you're going to sear all sides of the steak. So here are my steaks perfectly seared and you know that just takes a, a couple of minutes and I made sure and I seared all the sides including the edges and now when I cut into them you're going to see that it's perfectly medium rare. If your Instant Pot doesn't have a sous vide function, it's all right, no worries. Instant Brand makes immersion circulators that are standalone and you can use them to sous vide in your pot. So there you have it, a perfectly cooked sous vide steak in the Instant Pot. Now, there's no limits to what you can do under sous vide. You don't have to do just beef, you can do chicken and other meat, but you can also do vegetables. Sous vide carrots are great. Also eggs, things like that, it comes out great. So if you'd like some other sous vide recipes, you can visit my blog at www.lanaunderpressure.com and I'll put a link in the description below. And I hope you enjoy, and now I have some really great steaks to eat. Mmm, like butter. <laughs>